You better That's nip that fish. <laughs> That's a giant. I saw him come after it. I saw him come after it. I mean, he was 10 foot from the boat. That's a giant fish. Oh, look at that fish. Hey guys and girls, as you know, I have been in a quest to try to catch the Oklahoma State record. And you're not gonna see that on this video, but you're gonna see a couple of really, really big fish. But I wanna show you right now how to set up your Garmin live scope, your Panoptic live scope. And, and I learned all of this from my buddy Josh Jones. Josh has been running that live scope for about three years now. He's a crappie guide here in Oklahoma. He catches 100 crappie a day just routinely. And he's also a bass fishing guide also, and that's something he just started doing a little bit later. And he charges quite a bit to bass guide, I think about a thousand bucks, because when he's bass fishing guide, he's mostly teaching people how to run the machine. But I'm gonna show you on this video how we set that up to get the most advantage of it. Now, you can't just set it up one way and leave it. If you could do that, we'd just have Garmin set those settings on automatic, and you go to automatic and everybody would be perfect. So you have to tweak it and play with it as you go along. But I'm gonna show you some things that we set up and we leave some of the unit th things just about the same all the time. And then we change the gain around, we'll change some things around depending on whether we're in clear water or dirty water, how deep we're fishing. Uh, it makes, a, 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 the main thing is the depth and how much, you know, if you've got a lot of trash fish in the lake, if you've got a lot of clutter and dirt and, and trash in the lake, things that's showing up on your locator that you really don't want to see. So you might change your gain around a little bit. And keep in mind, as I'm showing you this, that I'm not an expert on it. I've only had these units for a short period of time myself, but I'm learning every single day. But here's the way you want to set your unit up. First, I'm just going to go ahead and pull my trolling motor out of the water because Here's one of the things that I had wrong to begin with. I'll pull my trolling motor up out of the water. Let me turn it around there, get the grass off of it. This is your transducer right here. This is your live scope. And it, when you, well, it's installed on most boats, it's turned around like that right there. Now that's fine if you've got your trolling motor mounted on the other side and you've got your prop pointed to the outside. I've got this on the left side of the boat and I got the prop to the inside of the boat, which is the way I carry mine because I don't want my prop out there to run into stuff around the trees and stuff is banging into docks or anything like that. So what you want to do on this, if you've got your prop to the inside mounted on the left side, means your, your trolling motor, your, this is up here. If you had it the other way, it's going to be down on the other side. That would be fine, but with your prop to the inside, I'm going to rotate that two clicks, one, two, to the left, counterclockwise. Two clicks to the left. Now I've got my transducer shining out there, shining out there where, where I want it. So, all righty. So that's a, one of the key things you want to do. We're going to do the rest back here on the pan optic. Now I've got these locators all etherneted together. So I've got that one on a different transducer. But the one in the back, actually, anybody sitting back in the back can see exactly what I've got right there. You can see right, right there, you know, real easily. We are in, I'll just grab this down here where I can kind of turn that motor around. But you see what we've got right there. As I move my motor, you see the chain, that's grass on the bottom. That's the bottom right there. I'm in 17.3 foot of water. I don't see any fish there. Now what we do is we just scan, we run and scan back and forth, looking, 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 looking for big fish. Not fish, but big fish. We find a lot of fish we don't even throw at. Sometimes we might go 20 or 30 minutes or even an hour without making a single cast. I went out the other day on Arbuckle, and I never did see a big fish. I, I finally caught a few small ones, two I think. But you see, as we put, put back to the, go back back toward the. Uh, that's panning out in front of the boat. I don't see any fish. I'm just drifting here, but panning back and forth. Okay. Here's the way we set them up. We're going to get over here. We've got, we've got this on. This is, uh, this is my live scope right here. This is the boat. It's sitting right here. And it's reading straight down. This is behind the boat. This is out in the front. I like to keep it out there. And, and my settings are what Josh taught me to do. I mean, I haven't gone out and set it a million different ways and checked it out. So if some of you disagree, that's fine. You probably know way more about it than I do. But if you buy this unit and you want to set it up, I've got it out here about 40 feet. You can have it out here, it's actually at 45. You can have it out here at, at 50 or 60, 90. We go to menu, we go to menu and said forward range. You see, I've got it set at 45 feet. So I want to set it out here, at, go down and set it, say at 66 feet. Let's just set it at 65 feet. That's what it looks like. 
Now I'm going to go back where I was right there. So now, now I'm reading out. Now I'm reading out there 65 feet. Now that's fine, and you're seeing further, and you say, well, that's really good, Jimmy. That's a lot better. You're looking out there 20 yards. But your objects are not going to appear as large. So what you want to do is kind of get it where you really like it. And we're, oh, there's a fish right there. See that fish right there? There's a fish right there. And uh, we're drifting, and so we can, we, can, we can see those fish. All right, so that's how, that's how you want it. Now, it's set on 60. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit my menu. I'm going to go up there to my forward range, and I'm going to back that down to about 45 because that's where I've been running is 45. I'll do a lot of experimenting as time goes by, but uh, right now, 45 feet. So we're only out there 15 yards in front of us is all we're reading. And we're doing that. We're going to hit the done. We're going to go back there. All right. Now we come back here where we are. We're 45 feet. Okay, now here's a couple other settings. You got this setting up here. You got uh, your depth range. I like to keep the depth range down a little bit below where the where the where the uh, it is. Now, so I got it there. I'm gonna move down just a little bit. See if you move uh, if you move down shallower, you make your picture bigger. See what I've done there. But now I can lose my bottom fairly quick. So I'll go down just a little bit more. I want to keep my bottom down maybe about five foot above the bottom of my locator. That's where you can see the best. Depends on what water you're in. Now I'm only in 17 foot of water, so if I move this down, you see what's happened there? Everything's got a lot smaller and it's moved way up. So I want to move it up shallower, uh, about right there. That's how good down. Now everything's big. There's that's grass right in there, and that's a hard bottom right in there. It's a little bit of soft bottom, hard bottom. All right, so that's why I set my depth. I'm gonna go on down a couple feet, go 25 feet, and uh, and and, and now, now I'm getting a little shallower. I'm gonna move it and clear up to 20, 20 feet. You see what happens? Everything got bigger when you did that. All right, so I'm gonna go back, and uh, I got that. And I'm gonna go over here. Let's look on our gain. Uh, your gain, you can do. I got this set a little high, probably. I moved it up a little bit. You're gonna run it from about 50 to 70 percent. 60 percent is a good place to run it. That's about 60. I kind of like 55, 60%. Might run as high as 70. Probably not going to run it much higher than that. Probably not going to run it much lower than about 50. That's where you want your gain. All right, let's go back. Okay, let's look here what we've got now. I'll go back to my menu. Sonar setup. Uh, I've got to uh, go to my sonar setup. My noise appearance. I got my appearance forward. I'm reading forward. Uh, you can set it where if you want. Oh, that's your color scheme right there. Of course, I've got orange crawfish. You can use a lot of different colors. If you want to change the colors, there's all the colors. Black emerald, that's what it looks like. You might like that better. Midnight blue, that's what midnight blue looks like. Uh, red shad, I kind of like red shad right there. Orange crawfish, and I, I simply set mine on orange crawfish because I've been fishing with Josh a lot. That's what he uses, kind of what you get used to. There's your yellow right there. Just kind of just what you get used to. I'm go back to the orange crawfish. That's sort of what I got used to because that's what Josh. I may not end up with that. I may try some others, you know, as I fish more throughout the summer. I go back right there. Uh, uh, color gain, your trails on it. Won't worry about that. Okay, here's a couple things right here. Noise reject. You want to keep that on low or medium. You see what it changed there when I changed it over to medium. Changes over to medium, it's knocking out a lot there. You can't see as good. So uh, you can have that on medium there if you want, but and same uh, uh, I'm going to put it back on low. All right, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, uh, I got that on low. Yeah, I got it on low. I'm going to go back there. I got that on low. Your TVG, TVG, you can put that medium or high. Again, run that on low if you can. You might have to run that on medium. Again, go back. And that's really, really what you want there. That's how you. That's about the way you want it set up right there. And as you move that, as you move that, as you move that around, you know, as you go down through there, you want to scroll back and forth. And you're looking for fish. All right, all right. Let me stand back up now. All right, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back. All right, now I got my full screen up there again. All right, now here's the other thing. Here's what we're doing. We're running this thing, and we're simply scanning back and forth. As we move along, we're scanning back and forth and looking out in front of us 45 feet. So that's exactly what you're doing. You're watching for fish on here. As we scan along, we're just simply 
looking, we run a trolling motor really relatively high, usually at least seven, sometimes all the way up to 10 because you can cover a lot of water. But let me tell you, I usually run mine about five or six because I'm just not quite as good at identifying fish as my buddy is. About to catch a good one. Here he comes. <laughs> Woo! I went right by him and he didn't bite mine. Yeah. I mean right by him. I reckon I was too high? Uh, I was awful close to him. He was in the middle. Oh, you hit him? He, he, he bit in between them? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I was to the left. Yeah, that's a good fish. That's just how close you can miss them right there. I thought Fairly. the fish looked like he was to the left of that. To I, me. I thought you were going to be right on him. Yeah, I thought he was to the left of it. I can see both trees. I can see the fish to the left. He runs his on 10, panning back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, looking for a big fish. Now, you're not just looking for fish. You're not looking for a wad of shad. If you see a wad of shad, you see a big fish on them, that's what you're looking for. Usually, if you see shad, a big bass will be above the, 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 the shad. Not be below it, but above it. Got him. He looked bigger than that. <laughs> he did look bigger than that, didn't he? I saw him coming after it. Yeah, I saw him coming after it. It's a nice fish. Ah, we'll just belly land those. <laughs> Look at there, he's hooked in the eye. One of the things you have when you got that Alabama rig is you got a lot of hooks out there. So you can hook them about anywhere. Well, he won't even lose his eye. And that's the smallest one we've had. But I want to show you something here, and I don't understand what this is. You see, I hooked that fish over here. But look at the other side of this fish. And now, I don't know, he's, he's lost that eye. And it's actually infected all the way around. I wish there was a way that I had something I could doctor that fish. Look at this, Josh. You ever oh, seen anything like I've that? I've never seen anything like that. I don't know what that is. And I've never seen anything that's infected like that. I don't know. It's something, but he's got an infection down there. Poor guy. And the fish is perfectly healthy. He looks good. But, uh, you're not getting any sugar. I just got to tell you. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but you're not getting any sugar. Uh, Here's two or three keys that you need to remember if you're trying to catch your personal bass, your biggest bass ever. Maybe the biggest bass in the lake that you're fishing. You want to be looking for big fish. So you look for a big, a big fish. If you put a big umbrella rig on and wind it in, that's kind of about what a big fish looks like. Uh, he's, he's big. He's a lot bigger than the other fish that you see on there. Your fish will show up the way I've got it here. They'll show up as big, big uh, white specks. Uh, see, like, look at that fish right there. Look at that fish right there. Look at that. That's a good fish right there. That's a big fish. That's the kind we want. When you bring your bait by, you want to, when you're pointing at that fish, keep your locator pointing right at that fish. Bring your bait by, you will actually see that fish come after your bait. One of the frustrating things that you have in this type of video game fishing is you have a lot of those big fish that will follow the bait and not bite it. <laughs> Kills me. They follow the bait and not bite it. They'll follow it and then boom, go right down to the bottom and disappear. You'll not see the fish that's laying on the bottom very often. You'll not see the fish in moss or grass very often. You'll not see a fish in a real thick tree. They got to be in trees that don't have many limbs on them, laying right out beside them. They shine like a new dollar. Once you kind of get accustomed to what you're looking at, and it takes hours to do it, but once you get accustomed to what you're looking at, you can find big fish. But if you're going to go search for a hunt for big fish, your PB, maybe the biggest fish in the lake, maybe a new state record, You've got to be resigned to the fact that you're not going to catch a lot of fish. A sensational day would be to catch like 15 or 20 bass. I mean, that's where they're really biting. You, but the most of the time, you see a lot of fish, and they don't bite. Here's some other things to keep in mind. Bass are mostly, big bass are mostly going to be moving. That's right, moving. That sounds strange, but big bass will mostly be moving. If you see a fish that's sitting still, a big one, probably not a bass, probably a gar or a carp. A gar, you can kind of tell them because they're long skinny. A carp looks a lot like a bass. But if he's sitting in one spot and he's not moving, it's probably a carp, not a bass. But if that fish is moving, the big giant bass are constantly moving. That's the biggest surprise to me in this type of video game fishing is that the big ones are constantly moving. And in fact, one of the keys to be able to, to, to catch them is when they start moving is to watch which way they move, throw your bait out in front of them. Got him. <laughs> Got him off that tree. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Oh. That'll work. 
That will work. He wasn't very deep, was he? About two feet under the yeah, I, 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 that I, tree. Yeah, that's all I knew. He was really shallow. Oh, yeah. We're looking for his mama. Pay attention on your scan. Are they out here 20 foot away from the boat? They 35 foot away from the boat? They 40 foot? If he's 15 foot in front of the boat, you don't want to make a 40 foot cast. Just throw it out there about 15 foot, drop it down, keep it above him. Drop it down, wind it in above that fish. Whether you're fishing a swim bait, a crank bait, a spinner bait, we've been catching them early in the year on an Alabama rig. As we move later into the year, I don't know. This is brand new to me. This is 20, the year 2020 is going to be, it's just going to be something to figure out how to do all this and get better and better at it as the time goes on. It's like a brand new way of fishing for me. And, uh, and, and how it can help you in tournaments, obviously, is you go out and fish a tournament the way you normally fish it, catch your five fish limit, go look for a giant. Go look for a giant. The big fish are going to be moving. They're going to show up as large fish on your scales. And uh, once you find them out there, then you want to throw a big bait that a big fish would eat and try to throw in front of the fish. As you see these fish swim, you'll see a largemouth with a big head. Carp doesn't have that. They got their heads just the same as a regular body. You'll see their big head, you'll see their big tail swimming. And it doesn't take long until you can identify that. So it's pretty easy to see the big fish. All over the country, biologists and state departments stocked a lot of big Florida bass in a lot of the southern states like Oklahoma and Texas. Alabama, right Georgia, here. pure Floridas. Right These are the here. biggest fish in those lakes. We have a lot of small lakes here in Oklahoma. Some of them are city <laughs> lakes. Some of them are, are uh, right just, just small uh, lakes, power plant <laughs> lakes, but they, where they stock those Florida here. bass, and many of them right are up there 10, That's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 pounds. That's the you fish know, that uh, we're looking for we're when we're looking for these bites. big fish. I'm not, I'm now, not will this unit I'm help you everyday fishing? Absolutely. This video and what I'm talking about and what we're showing you today, and you saw what we caught out there today. Not many fish, but you saw that one that was just absolutely a giant. I had another fish out there today that, uh, that we looked was the biggest fish we saw on the screen, probably in excess of 11 or maybe even 12 pounds. And I must have had a nick in my line because, you know, with throwing the Alabama rigs, you, you get the line wound around the, the head a lot. You know, we was fishing in a lot of brush and cover, and it must have had a nick in it. I set the hook and loaded up on him, and 20-pound test line broke. I uh, didn't even begin to pull 20-pound test, so I know it had a nick in the line. But So this is the way to catch really, really big bass. Is it easy? Heck no. It's really hard. But this is the way to catch a really, really big bass. That's oh, a that's a giant. We that's better net that fish. <laughs> that's a giant. I saw him come after it. I saw him come after it. I mean, he was 10 foot from the boat. That's a giant fish. Oh, look at that fish. Look at that fish. I mean, a giant. That's a, <laughs> it's a 10 pound monster. fish. That's a 10 pound fish. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, we have zero, zero, zero. I put new batteries in. We got some batteries, some batteries on this thing. I got some really good scales. These are old scales right here. I got some better scales. I just hadn't put them back in this new boat yet. Nine eleven. Nine eleven. Nine eleven. <laughs> Nine eleven. That's just pretty close to a ten pounder. That's all I can say. <laughs> pretty close to a ten pounder. Wow, it's a gorgeous fish. Wow. That fish was swimming. Swimming back down now. That fish was swimming just like that other one was. We've caught two fish up here in this four foot of water. And then both of them have been swimming. They've just been swimming and moving. And we actually, when we saw that fish, Josh finally caught it 20 yards from where we first saw it. Could never have caught that fish without following it. I, I see think a nine pounder on live scope right now. Live scope and a nine pounder. He said it was an eight pound fish when he saw it. Way to go, dude. <laughs> All right. Let's do it again. Good turn. Yeah. Now you remember you said sooner or later I'm going to catch a bass that beats that 13-1. And I'll probably do it seeing that fish on a live scope before I cast at him. Guys and girls, we hope you enjoyed this video. I know we didn't have a lot of fish on it, but they were big fish. It's difficult fishing out here. But 
It's a great way to catch your PB bass. That's it, your personal best bass. Don't forget to subscribe to Jimmy Houston Outdoors YouTube. Hit that little bell button. We're going to be having tons and tons of how-to videos to help you catch not only big fish, but a lot more fish too. Have more fun doing it. Guys and girls, I love you.